Hello Gradients, a much awaited and much requested video on explaining functions, okay? So I'm jumping straight to past paper questions. I'm using the November 2019 paper. You can find it on the app, okay? Question 5. It says, and you always read, step number one, always read the paragraph that's given, okay? So it says, sketch below are the graphs of f of x, okay? Let's just look, here's f of x. There's the name for it, okay? And also, it's given to us as k over x plus q. So we know that when x is in the denominator, then it's going to be a hyperbola. And g of x, which is x plus 2, and you see here, it's a straight line. How do I know this? Because the power of x is 1. And let's go back there. There's a straight line drawn, and there's the name for it, okay? It says... The equation, okay, let's quickly talk about this. We know a hyperbola has asymptotes, okay? We know that x cannot equal to zero, so that means this line over here is x equal to zero. That's why it will never ever touch the y-axis for grade 10 content. And then we know the plus q is the other asymptote, and it's the horizontal one, okay? It's us shifting up or shifting down. So it tells us the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 1. Automatically, I now know the answer to this. Automatically, I know that this value over here, because it says horizontal asymptote, is this value over here. It's plus 1. Okay, just by reading this. Okay, let's continue. It says graph G cuts the x-axis at B. Okay, there we see it. Straight line cut in there. And it says graphs F and G intersect. What does the word intersect mean? It means that they meet in each other. Okay, they cut in each other at A and B. There we go. Point A, point B. So now we know that F also has an x-intercept at this point over here. Okay. Let's answer the questions. The first question says, write down the value of Q. Hey, we did that already. There it is. Okay. So we're going to write this down. We're going to say Q is equal to 1. Easy peasy marks. Got that correct. Second question says, domain of F. Domain talks about all the possible X values that this graph can touch. So let's quickly look at this. Can you see that F extends all the way this way? forever after okay and if you look on this side here towards the right this arrow indicates it continues all the way this way forever after but there's only one value that it cannot ever touch because if you look here this graph is going 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 close 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 right all day and this graph coming 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 close till this point over here but it will never ever touch the y-axis why we spoke about it it's our asymptote if you make this zero it's going to become undefined okay that's why we're going to say that our domain is x is an element of all real numbers, okay, except x cannot equal to 0. Either you're going to write it like that, or you can write it like this. You can say x, okay, is an element of, and you're going to say from negative infinity, because isn't it goes all the way this way from negative infinity, so negative infinity all the way to 0, 0 not included, Okay, that there is a symbol for union, it means or, okay, from zero all the way, from zero all the way to positive infinity. Whichever format that you want to use is perfectly okay. All right, let's continue. It says, determine the equation of the line of symmetry of F that has a negative gradient. Now we know there's two of them. Okay, okay, school bell. Anyway, let's continue. Equation of the line of symmetry. We know that there's two of them. There's one going to be going up that way and one going down that way. So we want the negative one. So all you got to do is you write y is equal to negative x. And then you say plus or minus whatever the asymptote is. In this case, yeah, our asymptote is 1. So plus 1 and we are done. Second question says the equation of f. Now, how am I going to calculate the equation of f? Remember, we already figured out this value over here, this plus q. So let's write this down, what we know. Let's answer 5.2.2. We know um, y is equal to k over x plus 1. Okay. 
we need to figure out a point that it passes through. Now, we don't exactly have a point yet, but do you agree with me that we have g of x, okay, and we have that its x-intercept is this. So we can actually calculate what this value is over here. So how are we going to do that? We're going to first figure out what point b is. To do that, we're going to say y is equal to x plus 2, right? We know that the x-intercept is where y is equal to 0. So I'm going to say 0 is equal to x plus 2. Take this over, negative 2 is equal to x. Now I know that this point over here is negative 2 and 0. Okay, so now I'm going to say through negative 2 and 0. Let's write b over here so you guys don't get confused. All right, now I'm going to make 0 the y value and x must be negative 2. 1, take the 1 over, 2 is equal to k, so now we've figured out, sorry, figured out the equation of f, f of x is actually 2 over x plus 1, there we go. The last question says, calculate the coordinates of A, a point of intersection of f and g. What we're going to do for that is we're going to say f of x must equal to g of x, right? What is the equation of f of x? We figured it out. It's 2 over x plus 1. So let's write this down. 2 over x plus 1. And it must equal to, because at that point, A, they are equal to each other and b okay equal to here's the equation x plus 2 and now we just gotta solve this so this is going to be 2 over x is equal to x plus 1 uh, plus 2 bring that 1 over minus 1 giving me 2 over x is equal to 2 minus 1 is 1 so x plus 1 I'm going to multiply by this x over here because I want to get rid of it in the denominator so I've got 2 is equal to x times x plus 1. That's what I'm doing. Okay. 2 is equal to x squared plus x. 0 is equal to x squared plus x. Bring the 2 over. Minus 2. This here gives me two factors. x in this one, x in this one. If this is a plus, bring it down. Plus times what will give me a minus? A minus. And we're finding the factors of 2, which is basically 1 and 2, or 2 and 1, right? Take this sign, plus, plus. Take this sign, minus, minus. What are we looking for? We're looking for a plus 1. So it's going to be 1 minus 2 gives me a minus 1, not needed. So it's obviously this one over here, because 2 minus 1 gives me positive 1. 2 minus 1, so the plus 2 goes there, minus goes there. Therefore, x is equal to, no wait, let's write it like this for you guys, x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x is equal to negative 2, and this idea, x is equal to 1. Remember, this here was b's value. There it is. And it's negative, and you can see a has to be a positive. So instead, our a's coordinates are going to be 1 and something. How do I figure out the something? You take this 1 and you substitute it into either one of these equations. So I'm going to substitute it into the easier one. Okay, so it's 1 from here plus 2 giving me 3. Okay, and there we go. We figured out it said coordinates of A, a point of intersection. We did that.